If you and your co-parent share 50-50 custody, you're gonna need to figure out who is gonna claim the kiddo on the taxes. The way you're gonna figure this out is look at your divorce decree or parenting arrangement, and it should specify who gets to. Perhaps you would alternate different years, or maybe depending on the income of the parties, you agree that one person gets to year over year. Look at those governing documents, a decree or your order. And then finally, to be real sure how this is gonna work, you're going to need to talk to a CPA who can advise you on how the IRS would treat your unique situation. In a child custody case or a modification in Texas, you've gotta think through who's gonna pay for the attorney's fees. And the answer is both of y'all. They're gonna pay their fees and you're gonna pay your fees pretty much no matter what happens. Now I say that, the pretty much, there are sometimes some limited exceptions where a court may award attorney's fees to one party or the other, but it's very, very specific in very, very small circumstances. Unless there's something like domestic violence or really egregious facts, probably you're gonna go Dutch on attorney's fees. Are you a grandparent with custody of your grandchildren in Texas? You may be wondering who's gonna pay child support or how can I get some kind of money for, to help me raise these kids? And the question is an annoying lawyer answer, it depends. In a lot of cases I see, nobody ends up paying the grandparents child support because if a grandparent's involved and they have custody of the children, it's often because neither of the parents are in a place to really take care of their own life. Maybe they don't have steady jobs, they don't have any money. So child support is not usually something I see that flows through back to the grandparents. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible, and I'm sure there are circumstances where the grandparents have the kids and one or even both of the parents could have to pay child support to help raise these kids. It's just usually those circumstances don't arise because things have gotten so bad with the parents, we need a third party to step in and take the kids into their care. So unfortunately, you may be limited in terms of what you can get from the parents and might be able to better get some government assistance or some sort of those like social security benefits if there was a death or something as a way to help you raise the kids um, until they're adults. If you and your co-parent have joint custody, the question often comes up, who's going to pay the child support? But we got to back up the bus for just a second and figure out what you mean by joint custody. Because there's a presumption in Texas that two parents are joint managing conservators of the children. So when you say joint custody, do you mean that your JMCs joint managing conservators? Or when you say joint custody, are you talking about a 50-50 possession schedule? The two are not the same thing. Let's take the first option where you are JMCs. One of you is the primary parent who has the kids more, makes uh, the decisions about where the kid is gonna live and one is not the primary parent. That's the most likely outcome in most situations that ever go to a full mediation or to court. And in that situation, the primary parent, the one who makes that decision about where the kids live, receives child support from the non-primary parent. This non-primary parent often will be required, at least in the Texas Family Code, if it goes that way, um, to pay and cover the cost of health insurance additionally. Now, if you share 50-50 custody with your children in terms of your possession schedule, child support may work differently from you. Because if you have 50-50 in Texas, for the most part, what that tells me in my lawyer brain is that you guys settled at mediation. So probably what happened is you agreed to a 50-50 possession schedule because that is what worked best for you and your family. If you go to court, you're most likely to get the expanded standard possession order that every other weekend thing. So if you did 50-50 in mediation, you've got some sort of a deal made. So probably y'all decided how child support's gonna work. But one of the ways it can happen, and I see this often in mediation, with the 50-50 schedule, you'll often still have one party makes a lot more money than the other party. And so in that situation, what will happen is sometimes you calculate what would child support be at this salary rate? What would child support be at that salary rate? And then you do the difference, the delta, and that amount of money gets paid from the person who makes more to the person who makes less. So you pay a differential. And that's kind of a colloquial or just like a trick of the trade or one of those things that we do in mediation. It's not in the law or anything. Sometimes nobody pays anybody child support. 
Sometimes in a 50-50 possession schedule, full child support is paid from the, the person with more money to the person with less money. It really depends on what sort of a deal you struck at mediation.